There is talk of breaking up California's largest power company for its possible negligence in some of this year's catastrophic wildfires. But that is the least of the problems potentially facing Pacific Gas and Electric. Miguel Marquez is here to show us uh, how the utility could face murder and manslaughter charges after this year's tragedy. How does that work, Miguel? Yeah, well, there's a lot of if, ands, buts, and there's a lot of maybes in all of this as well. But basically, a federal judge overseeing PG&E's probation for an earlier conviction has asked for an opinion on possible California charges in the event recklessness on the company's part is found in this year's campfire, which killed 86 people. That's the deadliest in California history. Now, the California Attorney General recommended a range of possible charges, everything from misdemeanors. For example, if PG&E didn't maintain vegetation in power lines and fire fire prone areas or possible felonies and misdemeanors if PG&E actually started a fire. Finally, there could be manslaughter or even homicide charges, what they called implied malice murder. But all of this depends on the degree of recklessness that might be found on the county's behalf if there was an investigation in these fires. There are several investigations pending. Now, the federal judge, William Alsop, oversees PG&E's probation for six felonies the company was convicted of in the 2010 San Bruno gas explosion where eight people died. PG&E did not respond directly to the AG's opinion in this case, but said in a statement, PG&E's most important responsibility is public and workforce safety. Our focus continues to be on assessing our infrastructure to further enhance safety and helping our customers continue to recover and rebuild. Throughout our service area, we are committed to doing everything we can to help further uh, reduce the risk of wildfire. Now, there are enormous stakes uh, for PG in, in all of this. One of the nation's largest uh, gas and electric utilities. The company faces potential $15 billion already in liability for the 2017 wine country fires and could face much, much more for this year. PG&E says that it's already implemented new and enhanced safety measures, including upgrading its vegetation management efforts, conducting accelerated safety inspections, and in some cases, turning off the electric power when extreme conditions are forecast. All this happening against the stark background in California, as California, the, the, the state, the utility companies, including PG&E, all looking at a future of increased and more extreme fire activity as the West becomes much hotter, much drier, and much more combustible. All right, Miguel Marquez, thank you. We appreciate you it. it. Well, if there is skepticism among critics to PG&E's response to this year's devastating wildfires, CNN senior investigative uh, correspondent Drew Griffin shows us you why. You only need to take a closer look back at last year. This area was my studio with big windows. This is all Norma Quintana has left of the home she lived in for 30 years. A macabre reminder of the day her physical world turned to ashes. The fire was behind us. She and her family had five minutes to escape the Atlas fire in fall of 2017. When they returned, it was all gone. I couldn't negotiate the loss. I couldn't negotiate the loss of a home. Um, couldn't. Across Northern California, the fires in October of 2017, fueled by high winds and drought, would kill 44, burn 8,900 homes and other buildings. As the burning ended, the burning question began. How did this happen? We had a, a, a number of fires that uh, were the result of some, some type of ignition from power lines. Cal Fire investigators concluded that 17 of the 18 fires in October of 2017 were caused by equipment from Pacific Gas and Electric, the multi-billion dollar power company. In 11 of those fires, investigators found evidence PG&E violated state law. James Engel oversees fire investigations for Cal Fire. Is PG&E doing enough in your mind? Well, that's 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 not my call to make. Um, so, when in in the case of those particular fires, they, they were they were referred uh, to the district attorney uh, if there's violations of law. It's actually been going on now for years. 1994, 99, 2004, the Whiskey Fire in 2008, the Deadly Butte Fire in 2015. Fire after fire that investigators found were caused by a power company failing to follow state regulations to trim trees or maintain equipment. You see a pattern in practice that PG&E is not willing to step up to the plate and do what it needs to do to prevent these utility-caused wildfires. 
Attorney John Fisk has built a practice suing power companies and specifically PG&E for causing fires that are destroying Californians' lives. He's doing it, he says, because the state of California won't. If you had a company that was out in the Atlantic and it kept starting hurricanes um, and the government just kind of continued to let it start hurricanes, again, you'd consider that behavior to be almost sociopathic because people's lives are absolutely devastated. PG&E was convicted of six felonies because of a gas pipeline explosion in 2010. Just last month, the president of California's Public Utilities Commission announced a new review of PG&E, telling the Wall Street Journal he was very concerned. They, PG&E, still don't have accountability in place. Is PG&E getting the message, do you think? Uh, I think you're going to have to ask them. We tried, but the company declined and instead sent a lengthy statement saying it expanded its community wildfire safety program improving real-time monitoring, enhancing vegetation management efforts, conducting accelerated safety inspections, installing stronger and more resilient poles. Critics point to the way PG&E has spent its money, awarding its CEO salary and stock worth $8.5 million in 2017 and spending another $8 million lobbying lawmakers in Sacramento to get a law passed that allows PG&E to pass some of the cost of the fires onto customers. Now PG&E is dealing with this. Last month's campfire in Northern California killed 86 and destroyed the town of Paradise. Equipment from PG&E is being investigated as a possible cause. Attorney John Fisk says it has to stop. You know, in these wildfires, oftentimes the most vulnerable members of our community are affected because they're immobile and they cannot get out. That's how devastating these wildfires are. That's why it's so important that these companies change their practices. It's a matter of life and death. Asked specifically about the state investigative reports that found the company violated state law in 11 of those deadly fires last year, PG&E would only say it's looking forward to reviewing those reports. Prosecutors are reviewing them too and deciding if they will again pursue criminal charges against the massive power company. In the meantime, the homeowners, like Norma Quintana in our report, who lost her home, are suing PG&E. Drew Griffin, CNN, Atlanta.